Hey there, and welcome back to Melanie Loves Death Metal. Happy Sunday. I don't think I've ever uploaded a video on a Sunday before. Um, I've got the house to myself today. I figured why not just take advantage, listen to music, and record some videos, um, and get ahead of the game for this new week that's starting tomorrow. So, uh, today's going to be a little review of an album that has ended up being one of my favorite albums to come out this year. Uh, it came out officially November 24th, but I've had the... Um, promo for a while and, and it's the new Cruciamentum album Obsidian Refractions on Profound Lore Records. Uh, so I got the promo for this for a while ago, a couple months ago. I think I had it for about two months before the official release came out and admittedly I kind of slept on it. I was excited about the album to be released because you know I, I know the band, I liked their last album that came out in 2015 so it's been a while since they've released something so I was excited about that uh, but there's just been so much stuff other other stuff coming out lately that I kind of slept on listening to it and then about a, about a week before um decibels top 40 list came out i started i listened to the promo a couple of times and was like yep yep this is going to be one of the best death metal albums to come out this year uh it is so good and then and then obviously decibel put it on their list so i was happy to see that um there's a lot of scrutiny around decibels top 40 list there's a lot of scrutiny around a lot of people's end of year list things. A lot of people like just completely shit on the whole idea of creating a year end list and they completely shit on the fact that Decibel does it and the whole magazine as a whole. And it's fine. You don't have to like the magazine. You don't have to buy it or whatever else. But there are some positives that come to this. Now, they're a pretty large publication. A lot of people read their stuff. Um, and they don't just print magazines anymore. They actually, like, you know, they have a store. They they put out books. They do tours, stuff like that. So, they, so they're all around the space. But they're most notably, like, that's what their bread and butter is, is their publication. Um, I've subscribed to them several times throughout the years. I've not subscribed to them anymore, but I did buy um, the edition with Austin on it for from Panopticon just because I wanted to support him. I thought that was awesome. Um, but the top 40 list, I'm always interested to see. I always look forward when they put it out because there are usually bands on there that I had not listened to. And because they're saying it's good, it piques my interest to see if this if they're good. So I have done that for a couple of the bands that they put out. And there's one band that I've particularly loved that they put on that list. So we'll get to that when the time comes. But they did put Christy Mentum on there, which is what I was getting to. Um, I think they ranked them relatively high too, which I was happy to see. So Christy Mentum is a band out of the UK. I think they're like all over the UK. They're not just in one central area. Um, and they came out with an album called Eternal Passages back in 2015. Uh, that was also on Profound Lore, I believe. Yes. Um, and it was a really good album. It was, they have this like, Cavernous is a term that gets thrown out there a lot to describe a lot of these new, these new old school death metal bands. And yeah, I like it. A lot of it. Um, the Cavernous sound is definitely something that I tend to go towards when it comes to these newer old school death metal bands. Um, and the biggest, the biggest example that I'm thinking off the top of my head right now, because whenever I hear Cavernous, this is who I think of as Thorn. Um, but the, Christy Wentham doesn't have that sound of Cavernous. It's different. Um, and this album, Obsidian Refractions, I knew it was going to be good. I expected it to be good. I had a high hopes on it being good, but I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I have. And I've listened to it a lot now, and I've tried to come at it as an unbiased opinion because a lot of people dog on me for liking so much music, but again, do not understand what a year end list is. Like, a year end list is every single album that I liked this year, uh, so there's a lot. And this year, there's particularly a lot more than there has been in past years, but... And I, I want to talk about the music I like. And I want you guys to know the music I like. Like, what kind of a fucking channel would I be if I just talked about music that I hated the whole time? Like, I'm not that kind of a person. Although, I do hate a lot of music that I listen to. Um, but it get, the word dark and cavernous gets thrown out there a lot. Especially when it comes to this newer, old school sounding death metal um, class in the scene. Uh, but they really, Christy Metzen really uh, takes that term and does it in their own way. Um, it kind of puts them in their own little class of that. Uh, another example of this, I would say Alters is another uh, good example of how they have like that darker style of, of death metal, a little bit more atmospheric in there. 
that's for sure. Uh, that's another band that I'm thinking of right now. Uh, but they really combine their riffs and the, the growls of just the vocals and the, just the spectacular drumming and bass together to create like this really dark atmosphere that is cavernous but not in the vein that uh, I've mentioned you know like in a lot of other bands that are doing where it's just gotten so oversaturated they have their own dark and cavernous sound and that's very present on this album so it is a six track album or yeah six track album and uh, it comes in at 41 minutes long the first song is eight minutes long but let me tell you charnel passages is the name of the first song uh, so it's it's an ode to their their past album name. Um, that song is by far one of the best death metal songs we've written this year, in my opinion. Now you don't have to agree with me on that, uh, but that song is spectacular, and there's a lot of things to digest within it because they don't just keep the same tempo the whole entire song, and that's how this whole album is. It's not just a brutal assault, like just ass picking and chugs and you know just blast beats and everything like not the whole time they have some more slower tempo that almost gets a little bit doomier and then they have the you know the chugging riffing riffage and then the you know the crushing death metal and that is pretty much Charnel passages as a whole that whole entire song is just eerie and it's got faster brutal parts um but then there's just those little bit more of the slower almost atmospheric -y, but not like in the vein of like super atmospheric -y, I guess you could say. Um, but it's got a really good mood setter for the album. Like it really sets the tone and the mood of what you're going to expect for the album. And like I said, it just, it's barely, it's like one of the best death metal songs to come out this year, in my opinion. Uh, so I absolutely love the guitars on it. Uh, just there's so many spectacular things about this album. The guitars are incredible, uh, but the drumming is what really stood out for me. They have a new drummer. His name is Matt Hefner. He is also in Imprecation, and I think he was also on Blasperian uh, back in the day of their last album. One of their well, Blasperian is a pretty short-lived band, which is sad. Um, I'm blanking on the name of the band of the album name right now, but. I don't feel like looking it up, but anyway, he's an incredible drummer. I think he's a great addition to this band, uh, and just, he really carries the torch in terms of, of what you're hearing, um, as the backbone of this album. He just, it's, it's incredible. Like that is the, one of the biggest highlights of this album is his drumming. Uh, and it's just really on display here. So after Eternal Passages, it goes into a pretty, uh, ripper of a song called Hipporance Evangelum, I think is how you say that name. Um, it's a ripper of a song. Uh, drums are, again, spectacular. Um, and there's just an awesome guitar solo at, towards the end of the song. It just, it's just, it's a really, it's a crushing song. Um, like I said, six tracks. It's not a whole lot of music to listen to. Each track is, you know, averaging about five, six minutes, with the exception of the first song, Charnel Passages, and the last song, Drown, which is ten minutes long. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But the other standout song that I really wanted to talk about in here was interminable rebirth of abomination uh the opening riff and vocal line of this song is so crushing and so dark and this carries into the final song drowned which is a 10 minute cinematic finish for this album um it's crushing and it's got the slower parts it's got the doomier parts uh but it's just a really really good song you wouldn't know it's 10 minutes long i'll tell you that uh, it goes quick um so as a whole the album really uh I don't think I needed at least one full listen through to get a general consensus of how I felt about it, but it wasn't until about the fourth full listen through where I was sitting on my couch one night and I had my AirPods in, they're like the noise canceling ones, and I was sitting on my couch and I was listening to it, uh, just really trying to see if I can hear some intricacies and some stuff that's going on in the music that I don't necessarily hear when I'm listening on, like in my car and stuff like that, and it just, it really sucked me in like I it took me into uh a, like a like what those darker death metal albums do like they kind of put you into like a trance almost and you just sit there and just listen to the song and I had I had like you know I, I didn't have anything else going on I wasn't watching anything I wasn't on my phone I was just sitting there listening to it it's been a while since I've just sat and listened to an album like that 
without other stuff going on, without me like packing, shipping off an order to somebody that may have bought something from me or just sending something to somebody or working. I listen to music a lot while I'm working or doing the dishes or <laughs> cleaning the house or driving. Um, I, I just sat on the couch and listened to it because I wanted to really like hear hear it and I've been doing it a lot for a lot of the albums that I've really really loved this year uh, so this is going to be one of my favorite death metal albums to come out this year one of not my favorite but one of and I definitely think it it gets that it deserves that high praise that it's been getting I don't think it's overhyped and I think a lot of the the bands uh, in the scene do get pretty overhyped um, however, this one I think deserves all the praise, um, and I'm excited, you know, that they've come back from such a long hiatus, like they, you know, 2015 was our last release, to make a really good album. Um, I've seen some people say it hasn't really clicked with them, they didn't really enjoy it, or whatever else, and that's totally fine, like everybody hears things differently, um, but I, I took my time on this. I, I was gonna try and get the review out, you know, the day that it released, and I was like, you know what, and I just wanna, I wanna listen to it, I wanna really fully gather my thoughts on it and really listen to it so final final uh note here trial passage is definitely my favorite song on the album i hate saying that because it's an opening track um but the whole album is really good there's not a single filler song on here whatsoever i think uh interminable rebirth of abomination and drowned are also spectacular tracks but Scorn Manifestation is also very good, and Acropolis of Obsidian Mirrors are the only two tracks I didn't really talk too much about. Uh, the whole album is very good. It flows really well together. There isn't really anything on here that has made me feel like, oh, that doesn't, that shouldn't be here. It's a filler. It doesn't make sense there or anything like that. I think that they've started and they ended the, the album very, very good. Um, and if I like had to rank this, I, I would give it a 9 out of 10. Or maybe, yeah, 9 out of 10. I mean, I don't know. I don't really like doing that because... Again, I might go back and listen to this two years from now and maybe not enjoy it as much because I'm it's, music is a very mood thing for me. Um, but we'll see. So it's a very good album. I hope you check it out. Uh, it's still available. My copy has not been delivered yet. Um, I was hoping to have it to show off for this video, but unfortunately it won't be here for several more days. I, it, it's in like the post office hell right now. Um, and it's in Florida. Uh, it, it, it landed in Jacksonville and then it went to Tampa, which is where I live. And then it went to Clearwater and now it's down in Fort Myers. And I don't know. I don't know why it's taking a tour of Florida, the Florida coast, but uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll have it tomorrow. I don't know. But the post office has just really decided to give it the nice scenic route of Florida of coming from the side of the state that I don't really care too much for to now the the Gulf Coast and it's just taking its lovely trip down the Gulf Coast. So who knows? Maybe tomorrow I'll be in Miami. We'll see. But that is all I have today. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Uh, a couple more videos coming up this week. I got a couple more Black Friday stuff in the mail yesterday. So I'll show that off in a collection update and talk about the pricings and all that stuff that I bought it for. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.